Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Very interesting piece of information here uh, coming from Ukraine, actually coming from Crimea. And uh, it relates to uh, the three, I would say, Crimean attacks or attacks on uh, Russian uh, targets in Crimea by uh, the Ukrainians. Some Ukrainians claim it was a special operation uh, special forces operation. Some people say no, it was a drone, but we don't know by whom. Sand. Some people know it was uh, some missiles. Nevertheless, the targets were hit. The S-400 and S-300, the Russian air defenses, took a shit basically. And now the article talks about a massive migration uh, of civilians from Crimea they leave uh, but this is according to the new voice of ukraine august 17th 2022 record traffic jam at crimean bridge as russians leave peninsula after explosions i do believe that i do believe this uh, shevchenko said russian invasion forces set up a checkpoint in front of the bridge to russia and are checking everyone who leaves the occupied peninsula. The traffic jam on the way to the Kersh Bridge broke records, Shevchenko said. It's about 30, 38,000 cars. Last time after Nevofedorivka, the Russian airbase attacked on August 9, about 37,000 cars left the territory of the Crimean Peninsula in the direction of Russia. The occupying authorities set up a checkpoint at the entrance to the Kersh Bridge. All those who leave Crimea are checked there. In particular, they check documents, cars and personal belongings. Explosions were heard uh, again in Russian-occupied Crimea on August 16. In the morning, an ammunition depot exploded near the village of Azovstoye in Zankoy district and a fire broke out at an electricity transformer station in Zankoy itself. Later, explosions hit an airbase near the Crimean capital Simferopol. Russia blames the explosions on quote-unquote accidents. Yeah, that's quote-unquote accidents. I don't believe there were accidents. Accidents in their uh, defense uh, policy and whatever you want to call it, actions, which failed greatly but the evidence point to three to this being attacked by Ukraine, either by long range missiles, I think so, or rockets, or as some Ukrainian officials have hinted anonymously by Ukrainian special operation sabotage groups working behind enemy lines. I think the rockets, because I think the groups uh, after the first attack, I think the Russians were all up and ready and sober. Uh, the last word is the key word, sober. And uh, I think they um, they would uh, have been already up after the first one. So they were like, we're waiting. <laughs> that And if it happened two more times, uh, I think it's just that the Russians did not have an answer to whatever struck them. Uh, that's what it is. I mean, you can't, you can't leave uh, those objectives undefended. There are two military airfields that you're using next to a war zone like what next to a war zone and you don't and you don't defend it don't put air uh, air defenses air defense systems i think they were i mean they sh um, should be 100 percent air defense systems around airfields that you take off with your uh, planes to bombard and hit targets in a war zone uh, if th you didn't, then someone has to take responsibility for this failure. And after the first one, they have what? From uh, 9 and the, the, the 16, almost 7 days, right? 7 days to, to do something and it didn't? In 7 days, if you if you notice, oh, I think this was, uh, you know, possibly uh, it was an attack, a uh, missile attack. You don't bring some units over there? You don't have them? I mean, that uh, dump of uh, ammunition depot supposedly not supposedly it was reported by the ukrainians that uh, they were storing uh, about eight s400 uh, air defense systems and three s300 and some pansir and all that so they had them in the area 
So after the first one on the ninth, all those units, the eight S400s, could have been deployed to the whatever the strategic locations were. I think they were, but they were incapable. That's the word, incapable of hitting whatever hit them, destroying whatever hit them. And I don't think it was the special operations. How did they do it? They came over there with bazookas. Really? These things are not like they are in a uh, crowded uh, area. Airfields are outside. You see them. Cam cameras, their radars, it's people over there. I think it were missiles from far away and say, I'm going to hit them. And these guys were not even able to hit anything coming. Anything coming. They just hit everything they needed. Failure. That's why the Kirsch Bridge, the Crimean Bridge will be destroyed. And the Ukrainians just stated today, one of the officials, that it must be destroyed. So from, oh, maybe, we got to where they wanted, you know, the small step uh, technique that they use. They start for a little thing, they see how thing, people react, and then boom, even if Medvedev, uh, the former uh, president and prime minister of uh, Russian Federation said, hey, if they're gonna hit Crimea, we're gonna, we're gonna be, they have no place to hide. We're gonna get them, we're gonna hunt them. Um, three times already. Okay, what's next? Well, uh, 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 Medvedev, come over here. What did you say? You smack. Don't say that again, if you can't back it up. That's what it should be done. That's exactly how it should be done. Uh, and that would be nice. Uh, you know. It's just uh, frustrating because it's just... I am personally disappointed with, uh, with the defense system. That's one thing. It must have been there. And then these guys are running, uh, running away from Crimea. Now, I, uh, what do you expect? What do you expect? Now, I don't know if these guys are tourists because Crimea is a, is a big destination for, you know, Black Sea coast over there. So I don't know if they're, uh, be, and because of the checkpoints, you know, it's normal what's happening. So the cars don't go on, uh, you know, just go drive. So you have to stop, you waste uh, three minutes with the guards over there and then goes. Three minutes, it adds a big column behind you, that's for sure. So um, could be tourists, could be a regular traffic. Uh, but 37,000 and then now 36,000 or something uh, ready to go. I don't know the average traffic of the Kirsch uh, bridge in a normal day. But it's still, uh, I, I think people will just get up out of them. I mean, you would be, you're being, you've been hit three times. What, what makes you believe you're not going to be uh, hit the fourth, fifth, sixth and so on? Oh, uh, well, um, I think it's a normal reaction, but where are you going to go and for how long? And the point is, if these guys are able to hit you there, where are not they able to hit you? In Moscow? I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for some hits in Moscow. Not because I'm, oh my God, let's wait. No, but it's, it's the normal course of events. That's the next step. It's going to be over there. And I wondered this for a few months already, why these guy did not, guys did not do anything in Moscow. They should have been already, already, already planned as a strategic defense mechanism, not now with, the, with this war, but they all have it. Do you think, for instance, that, um, uh, let's say, uh, in a case of an altercation with, between Russia and, let's say, United States, don't you think that uh, Russia only then will uh, plan a uh, attack on, let's say, in Washington, D.C., like a uh, sabotage? Okay, guys, uh, we are at war, man. That's, uh, let me break the news here for you. So let's plan something. We didn't plan. Everything is planned. Planned. What do you think those militaries are just digging holes every day and make uh, the c cadets run around? No, they plan and they come with what would be the best way to strike there, what's going on in this scenario. And they bring plans. But then this happens, they take that and they read it and say, okay, or they're familiar already with that because they have departments that are, you know, in control of that and responsible. So they already know it. You just take the file and they have a meeting and they say, pop, 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 pop. And then they say, okay, any suggestions? I give you, I don't know, a few hours, come with any suggestions that you might find cracks in this plan. And they come and say, yes, I think this is, uh, I think, uh, uh, and then they act. These things were, were done way before. So in this uh, uh, scenario with Ukraine versus uh, Russia was planned by, the, by Ukraine since uh, to, uh, 1991 or not even before that by its, you know, and why I'm saying before that, because Ukrainians did not want to be part of uh, anything having to do with Russia. So once they uh, broke, broke apart, 
I'm pretty sure there was these guys are going to try to get us back or something some way. So they and the same with the Russians. How are we going to be take care of Kiev or other towns or whatever they have their their control centers? It's done. It's, it's normal. It's A B C one two three. It's nothing. Oh my God, genius! No, that's what it is. So yeah, I'm waiting for Moscow, and it, it's been already what six months. Nothing, but we'll see. Uh, probably if that happens, uh, they're afraid that the Russians will just raise Kiev, but we'll see. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.